let's think aloud.com you're tuned in with me himani and so i'm going to be talking to very interesting individuals what's interesting about this story um couple goals they've redefined couple goals they've become fat to fit i don't know if i should be calling them fat but we're going to find out from them what their story is let's welcome with a huge round of applause from me alone mansi and viral hi hi himani how are you good doing doing good yeah yes. so it's this it's about 8:30 on a uh, tuesday evening yes. and uh, we are here chatting after dinner what do you, what do you guys have for dinner viral we had my favorite vaghareli khichdi <laughs> what is vaghareli khichdi so it's uh, khichdi with uh, vegetables in it huh? and tadke wali yeah. wow with how much ghee i don't know maybe i don't know maybe like a spoon of yeah, ghee yeah a, a spoon full of ghee, of ghee. In that entire good. pot. Yeah, ghee is good. Just you know, that's the first yeah. myth buster. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so just in case you guys are wondering why we're talking about food, because that's the reason we're talking to Mansi and Viral today. Uh, they have a very, very inspiring story. If that's the right way to put it. And uh, the reason it is inspiring is because when we, when I come across anybody, or even me, if anybody asks me, "Oh, you're looking thin. What did you do?" Um I probably don't reveal what I did or what I truly do. I may say that oh just working out a bit or you know stuff like that. But uh, when I accidentally met Mansi one day and we happened to talk and I asked her hey you looking really you lost a lot of weight what did you do? And she really had a list of things that she did <laughs> to lose weight. So this is actually their story on uh educating people like us who uh, think that you know the story from fat to fit uh, shouldn't be discussed where ideally it should be discussed so mansi and viral firstly tell me one thing i mean i've known mansi from a while now and yeah you've never been like really the skinny type you, mm. you know you've always been a little, the little baby fat and yeah. and you're very comfortable in that yeah. like i never thought that you weren't comfortable in your skin or you were very conscious that you you know you're probably a little overweight i never saw you as that yeah. so how come this sudden decision between you and your husband who inspired whom that let's get fit <laughs> wow okay um it's it's a journey to be honest and it's a very cliche way to put this mm-hmm. but this is not a first uh, rodeo with weight loss okay and both individually before we met and even now we've tried a few times and failed okay but, uh, so the first key is don't give up and the uh, second was inspiring or not i'm not sure but one fine day we just decided to do it In fact, it was quite funny. Mansi was going out to meet. I'm sure we will discuss with Jula a bit later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was going out to meet, and she assumed that I was not going to join for that consultation. Okay. And I just put on my shoes and like, she was. Uh, so basically, as well. you you mean your dietitian? My yeah. dietitian. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Jula Bakshi is yeah. my dietitian, and she was going to meet her, and I basically just decided to join. Okay. And that's literally how it started. Yeah. But it wasn't the first time we thought about it. So okay. We have consulted other people in the past. We have tried on our own and failed. Uh, this time, as I said, the stars aligned perfectly. Mm-hmm. Everything fell in place. Why did you decide, Mansi, to go? Yeah. So, I, as usual, I'm going to take a step back because we will jump ahead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> does he always do that? <laughs> yes, he always does, and I'm like, you have to tell the back story. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, but, let's get to the point. <laughs> well, if I did all of them, yes. what would you? Do? <laughs> um i think at the end of the day it it kind of related back to our health and um so we got married about 3 and a half 4 years ago um and since then you know there's there's always a honeymoon period where you think the world is beautiful and everything is wonderful and no matter what you do mm. you'll be fine um obviously after those 3 years we realized okay yes the world is beautiful things are you know life is lovely but we've also put on a lot of extra weight right um but like you said himani neither of us were okay i wouldn't say neither of us were never the skinny type we was actually quite skinny okay um, back once in his college upon a yeah time. W- college days <laughs> once upon a time um i was never but we had put on a lot more weight then you know we should have hmm. um and uh, there's some you know family history on both sides where we felt okay if we don't do something about this right now uh we're, we're going to enter that danger zone right for me specifically um you know i've had hypothyroid i've had hormonal issues things like that and uh, it got to a point where doctors were just like you know you can pop as many pills as you want to but at the end of the day the only thing that's really going to resolve this issue is weight loss right so you know i had gone through a few rounds with the doctors and it got to a point where i went from you know like a cocktail of drugs to literally telling the doctors 
I don't want to take another pill. Hmm. Um, and I think that was a turning point, which was earlier this year, where there was really nothing else I could do. And so at that point, both of us had a discussion about it. And like Viral said, um, you know, we we lined up some meetings with some dietitians in hmm. uh, Singapore, and uh, we went ahead and we met them and. We found the one that we felt, you know, best suited our needs and and had a plan in place, um, and that's how we went ahead. But it was a, the trigger mm. was literally a health concern. Fantastic. So, but tell me this: uh, when you decided that, okay, you know, let's go. Before I get to how you really, dis- yeah. you know, got to losing weight and all, how yeah. much? Like from the time you see, you're saying you started in January, February, twenty seventeen. <laughs> Today we are sitting on August. How many yeah. kgs have you all lost? Between the both of us, I would say about twenty-eight kgs. Are you serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And I would say that would, that's probably up till like it was a regular like a good pace of weight loss up till about three months ago. Mm-hmm. In the last three months, things have slowed down. Also because I think we've also been a bit liberal yeah. in the way we've been just living <laughs> our life. Um, but otherwise, yeah, about twenty-eight kgs between the both of us. Yeah. So this and it's is pretty much evenly split. Yeah. Uh, she's lost a bit more than I have. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a <laughs> lot, you know. I mean, we're not even talking of like nine months here. We're yeah. talking about like seven or eight months. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. How how tough was it? Were these like the most challenging months of your last five years? Not at all. So yeah. This is yeah. another one of those myths where people think that it's going to be very difficult, and rightfully mm. so. When I have done this in the past, it was extremely difficult to follow through, and several factors, obviously. With the advantage of hindsight, you think about what's different this time. Right. Earlier, it was you first. Anyone, I think, goes through this. The first they try to do their own diet. I have the internet. I'm educated. I'm right. smart enough. I know how this works. There's I've YouTube. seen. <laughs> yeah, there's YouTube. I've seen like ten documentaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how food. And I'm a victim works. of that. I, I have to admit. Yeah. <laughs> so am I. So I, you know, this yeah. is not an intellectual exercise. Mm-hmm. I think both of us have gone through that. Mm-hmm. There was a phase when I did the juice, ex- you know. Juice yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Those challenges. Yeah, in fact, uh, we were both in Australia. Um, this is before we got married, and we, you know, Australia is famous for its uh, farmers markets and right. big markets on the weekends. Mm. So I have a memory of actually going to one of these markets and buying dapas, like boxes and crates of just fruit. Which was lying around the entire house, and every morning we were like cutting up. I don't know oh how many God. oranges and <laughs> yeah. celery sticks, and I have no idea what else, and just juicing. So this was trying to lose weight for the big fat Indian wedding. No, I think it was just. <laughs> it's just uh, a just a healthy lifestyle. Thing. Yeah. Oh. This is a part of again when you don't follow a structured program. Mm-hmm. So you try to battle all of these things by your own intellect. And right. Sometimes yeah. you don't have all the variables to make that decision. Right. So that was the first thing. So. The reason I failed in the past, and I think I'll speak both for uh, for both of us here, is because we tried to do it on our own, thinking that we kind of know. Yeah. Mm. But that did not. Now, when we sought out in a more scientific manner, you know, so look at the health, the nutrition, mm. the goals, the exercise, everything in a holistic fashion, it actually did not feel like any work. Yeah. Uh, again, I would like to disclaimer: <laughs> it was a bit of effort, but yeah. didn't feel like. A lot, so it didn't feel like every day we are dragging our feet, and then oh my god, I'm starving, and I crave this, and I crave that, and really want things. No. Yeah, in fact, it was it was much easier than what we had imagined. Yeah. And um, I and this wasn't actually the first time that I've seek professional help. Hmm. Um, this was actually the second time. Uh, two years ago, I was working with uh, a, you know a nutritionist in India, a very famous nutritionist in India. <laughs> um, but there were no results. That I mean, okay, I, I'll take that back. It wasn't that there were no results, but there were no weight loss results. I think right. there were other results for sure. Um, you know, just in terms of general well-being. Um, but I guess you know, it's just a different way of doing things this time round. And I guess also just sticking to you know, uh, uh, exercise and a food plan. Which really helped. Okay, so that yeah. gets us to the real plan. So, yeah. you went, you would, you go, both decided that you know y'all are gonna get into this diet plan and this yeah. exercise regime and all of that, and y'all slept over it. Y'all went to the dietitian. Boom, y'all wake up in the morning. How does day one begin? What did y'all start doing? Correct. Tell me. Um, so a variety of things. Uh, one of the first sessions that we had with the dietitian was um, well. 
obviously for her to understand what we are eating at the moment right um at the same time we had also pre submitted our blood reports so one of the things i would say is definitely when you're looking at who to go to go to a dietitian um who you know they they kind of clinically trained hmm. in a way I, i i don't know if i can really explain the difference but um also in in a number of countries there are laws against who a nutritionist can meet versus who a dietitian can meet right and a dietitian is is someone who actually works with the hospitals and you hmm. know is connected to doctors and stuff like hmm. that so yeah we had blood reports based on which our dietitian then um assessed uh, what we were eating and then said okay give it give us a short list in fact it was not a very long list at all it was a short list of just things that we should avoid eating based on our individual blood reports what was the list um so i think the common things that we had were banana uh coconut water these are things not to eat not to eat are and you we'll serious we will we'll get to it yeah reason. um i think potatoes is a pretty oh a no bit more of a no logical, um, <laughs> before you yeah. start grooming i love vada pav so oh, this was one of the man. things what no potatoes and viral had his birthday coming up in like 20 days and he was like my birthday ke din vada pav so pehle se no i'm sure there would be cheat days yeah i mean yeah well we didn't um we didn't really have cheat days oh so there weren't like cheat days prescribed by the dietitian no, there no, oh my no. god and that was also because you can prescribe but then what if you wake up one morning and just feel like no i really just want to eat this so then you eat what you need to eat you satisfy your craving but then you make up for it yeah. wow okay so let's get no bananas yeah. no coconut water yeah so no coconut water no bananas no potatoes um avoid avocados i think are you no serious avocados, no avocados as well for both yeah. of us in fact um and uh, well alcohol that was yeah, a big that okay. was a big one that's for um, me for for viral not for, not for me okay. as much um, so you could have your glass of wine if you feel no no as in we were both not supposed to but i just generally don't oh, drink okay. much oh okay oh okay so okay. for me it was a good way to kind of just cut it out of right. my system right away um i think these are pretty much that's it right. yeah and the, the big one so these are regular foods right yeah. well considered healthy foods that we were hmm. supposed to avoid. oh of course yeah and cut out completely was processed food which means white bread mm. so bread yeah, was completely true. out of the house even now we do not eat the brown bread, bread? any bread so bread in general is is not advised um but having said that it's not like we haven't had bread so um the second thing actually what we did with the dietitian and this is related is um she took us through portion sizes So she explained that you know basically we had to take some of our utensils and stuff uh, to meet her, and she said okay if you're having one bowl like if there's this one bowl in front of you, um, that one bowl of rice is equivalent to one uh, roti. So again in rotis we have different styles of rotis. Um, Gujarati rotis that we usually have at home are thin and patla, you know the the pulka mm. types. Mm. Um, but then uh, we also have a roti matic. So that wow. roti matic <laughs> that is the equivalent of one roti. So one roti from that roti matic is the equivalent of one bowl of rice, right? Which is equivalent to one slice of bread, which is equivalent oh. to half a bowl of noodles or half a bowl of pasta. Um, okay. Oh my god. I think at this so, point your <laughs> listeners is going to go like this is way, way too, much. too much. Yeah. No, it's not. I I think it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. Okay. So firstly, the reason why bread is bad because it's hidden calories. Right. Your, your bread has a lot of chemicals in it that's yeah. for one. Hmm. Second is loaded with sugar even if it's brown bread or whatnot. Just the process of mass producing bread hmm. includes a lot of sugar. And that's just facts to it. So if okay. you're making bread at home, maybe that's a better way of doing it. So that was the first reason why we cut out bread. Uh, going to why we cut out the otherwise healthy food, hmm. banana and what. Hmm. So when I was eating, you know, uh, or dieting rather, trying to follow a very healthy diet on my own, I was thinking banana is healthy. I should eat banana. So I know. My afternoon cravings were was banana. So in between meals, right. In the morning, I used to have a toast with avocado on it. Very healthy. I love so it. I thought, That's my favorite breakfast, you know. <laughs> oh, mine too. But in in the afternoon, instead of having a cold fizzy drink, I would have coconut water. Well, healthy. Oh man. So the three things common in this, forget the sugar. It was the potassium, which meant that my blood mm. work showed that I had high levels of potassium, which is not healthy. Yeah. So 
this is again going to the reason that you try to do this if you're not medically trained you hmm. would not know that right i'm having these things otherwise healthy exactly. but they are causing my potassium levels to rise wow so that was the reason we cut it out and now i can eat them but i'm very yeah. cautious about it so if so, i'm having an avocado i would not have a banana that day oh, or i'd have a banana okay. on the days i'm exercising because you sweat out right potassium. right actually that's the main thing what he just said that uh, even if you have slightly higher levels of potassium as long as you are working out and sweating it out it's okay it's to okay. consume these items mm. so earlier we were not working out as much and we were not doing as much physical activity which is why it became dangerous for us but as soon as we started working out um had a bit more of an active lifestyle we were able to introduce these foods back into our diet okay so <clears throat> let's look at it this way yeah. first 10 days into the diet what was your breakfast um uh, breakfast was either well we could have anything related to eggs so it could be an omelet the same thing egg. for both of you pretty much pretty much yeah. so proteins were safe bet okay yeah. right at that time uh, a bit of carbs is also you know what actually no our first 10 days <coughs> of breakfast were fruit was it just fruit with fruit yeah only fruit yes so either papaya or watermelon Those no milk the, uh no milk we didn't have in the morning not in the morning no. we in our diet i think we it was one, one glass of milk a day that we could have so yeah. what was your breakfast again so we started off with fruit first 10 days she yeah. remembers better first 10 days we started off with fruit um and then we didn't have enough uh, like a morning snack but then lunch would be it could be anything it could be like dal chawal it could be roti sabzi it could be, it could literally be anything that fit into our, our portion so carbs we, is okay basically carbs is okay. okay in fact even today we can have three bowls of rice if we want oh, during the day so that's not an issue obviously brown rice is preferred over white hmm. rice if you having white rice have a bit less of white rice right um but yeah it was just a normal um, just a normal lunch whatever mm-hmm. and then uh, like a mid afternoon snack it could be a fruit again um, nuts or yeah or nuts. nuts some kind of nuts yeah, yeah. and then uh, in the evening just a regular meal yaar but breakfast just fruits is so tough yeah just, <laughs> just kick start so it now for example i don't yeah. there's not fruit in the, in yeah. the breakfast now yeah. Yeah. proteins so then we went on to eggs yeah okay it was i basically then, eat moong for breakfast yeah. which i like so it's not so like cooked moong yeah yes Oh, nice. Yeah, so you can have chana moon, whatever. Like in in fact, um, she she did the dietitian did encourage that you know we try out like things like upma or poha and all oh. that stuff as well. So she's like, you can have anything. You can have dosas, anything you want, as long as you manage your portions throughout the day. And you don't have processed. Processed so is generally bad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, in general, it's bad. So we try to avoid that, and we thought it would be extremely difficult to do that. It's mm. not. Okay. I, you, wow. You still have to go look past some of the things. So first few days you might feel that no, it will be difficult. You know, I'm used to having a biscuit with my chai. Hmm. All of those things. How am I going to do without it? And I think that it's a fundamental change in thinking. Right. So don't think I have to do without it. I say, what can I do with? Can you have chai? Like, could you have chai? I yeah. have chai. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you yes, can. You can, can have, have chai. chai. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then dinners would be. Same. I mean, you can have your roti sabzi. Oh, you can still have carbs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so no, the the, no the like thing. Out of carbs yeah. in the evening so the thing with know. carbs was how much does your body need? Okay. Right. So cutting out carbs completely is frankly stupid. Right. You know, how does your body produce energy? Otherwise, you need glucose in the system. Right. So if you don't have carbs, your glucose level could drop drastically. Yeah. Nothing. No fuel going in. So carbs yeah. are important. Never follow a diet with no carbs mm-hmm. unless you're under medical advice on that. The problem I had was I used to my dinner used to be very carb loaded. So okay. I used to have three, four, maybe six rotis at right. times. Right. Yeah. Just at yeah. Like that's obviously bad. I mean, I didn't right. Need a dietitian to tell me that I do yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah. But now I can eat carbs, but it's just that as long as I'm using it throughout the day, I'm not Correct. loading my system at yeah. one time of the day with high carbs. So that's the thing with carbs that you should eat it. No dietitian should ever tell you that probably no, don't cut mm. out completely. That's mm. not. and manage your portions throughout the day as long as you do that you're okay fantastic i think something else that we had done um which we actually don't do now uh, is to have um are you familiar with isabgul yeah yeah so to have isabgul like half an hour before your meals because it helps okay. kind of control hunger 
After before every meal you before will. Before every yeah. meal. Okay. But that's but just fine. Before lunch and dinner. Yeah. Right. Before lunch and dinner, not breakfast. Okay. Um. So we did that quite regularly. Okay. In, in the beginning, which we don't do right now. Beginning, right. I think I followed that for lunch, and maybe I followed that for four days. <laughs> <laughs> I've never followed it. After. Well, I did it. Um. But yeah, you could you could feel the difference that that made just hmm. hunger pangs and stuff. But tell me one thing: a lot of us, uh, sometimes you know, go opt for protein shakes, and yeah. some of us have seen fabulous results with that i mean maybe yeah. not like for a long time but to get the initial shape mm-hmm. uh, people take protein shakes, shakes. for a month or for two yeah for better shapes <laughs> <laughs> then they get into that better shape and then yeah. they move on so what do you have to say about protein shakes have you all tried it yeah, have you we, yeah we take protein shakes no 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 <laughs> qualify that wait no don't jump okay yeah. <laughs> Just right, so first your question what do i think about protein shakes yeah. as that Now, fundamentally, they are okay as part of the larger diet. But right. They are doing any crash diet, saying that hmm. I'm going to do this for two months, get back into shape, and maybe right. I'll start my journey of exercising and maintaining that later. Hmm. Sorry, it doesn't work. Yeah, Being totally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It does not. Okay. Right. We have protein shakes in the sense we have protein powder just to augment our protein intake because we exercise three times a week. We are trying to do ten thousand steps a day. Okay, so, hold on. Sorry, you guys are exercising only three times a week. In the gym, every day we are supposed to walk about seven oh. kilometers, which oh, is ten thousand steps. Okay, so the ten thousand steps stays for yeah, it. Yeah, stays. Yeah, that was like one of the first things yeah. we did um, from day one. Wow. Ten thousand steps. To calculate ten thousand steps. Are you all following it even like today? Uh, are you? Are you? How many are you done today? Little is. I'm not. How many? Oh right. my God! You just I have, can show she can't. You can you can leave me to the car park and you'll be done with your <laughs> the remaining. <laughs> yeah, no. Like I said, I've been a bit liberal with with uh, things in general, and this is one of the things at least in the last three months oh. that I have not kept up with. Yeah, especially um, with the office. How how did you complete nine thousand? So I walk to lunch. Like she stays in the office most oh. of the time. If I have yeah. to go out and fill my water bottle, then I would take the longer way around right. the office to yeah. do that. Uh, I take the MRT, so from the way back I don't take the mm. bus. From the MRT mm. to home I walk. So basically, I break up those steps in about two or three parts in a day. Oh, lovely! So that's easier yeah. to do. Actually, Hamani, that's it was a very uh, different experience doing that in the in the initial part of mm. um, our plan, where we just had to think of new ways of yeah, you know walking yeah. around and. Um, I mean, for me, I've done things that I would have never otherwise done. I'm one of those people who's very happy to just go down, get into a cab, and get to another place. Right. But uh, you know, this exercise made me really think about how I can divide my steps. So there were there were times when I would um, walk back from work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, that's from like close to Chinatown, walking back home. Um, and then there's the There've been a couple of times when I've walked from Orchard Road back home, wow. or I've uh, you know just walked around the block at work, which again I would never have done if I if I wasn't you know right. asked to do this. Um, the the one that everyone kind of gets irritated about is me walking around the house uh, because <laughs> the few thousands that yeah. I need to complete at the end of the day. <laughs> so basically, Netflix is you know wow. what I would switch on and I would just walk in the corridor. Um, Amazing. Crazy, <laughs> I mean, crazy. it's not ideal, but at least I would do it. Are you guys and competing with each other mm. at some point to keep yourself motivated? Uh, <laughs> well, that's not a competition. She can win. <laughs> so she does not compete yes. on that. Unfortunately, okay. I'm not like Viral, who once he puts his mind to something, you know, it's accomplished. He'll do it. <laughs> but um, no, I for me it was, but it was different in the sense that you know a lot of times in the past I would just be like, oh, it's okay, it's eleven, it's eleven p.m. I'll just go to bed. But we were at a stage where even if it's past midnight, no matter what, like if we need to finish those ten thousand steps, we would finish those ten thousand oh, wow. steps. Oh wow! So that's the kind of determination we had at that point. Super. Um, and I think that so basically your steps, the portion control, um, were the two major things and the two major changes that we brought um, into our life. Yeah. So anyone would tell you that diet is. Hmm, crucial. Depending on who you speak, seventy or eighty percent of yeah. right. you know the equation, and the rest is exercise. Uh, so we did manage both very hmm. well. So hmm. going to the gym three times a week at least. Yeah. These ten thousand steps, and once or twice a week I would play some kind of sports, so badminton or whatnot. 
Nice. That's not been very regular, but yeah. that helps immensely. So any movement you can get in the day, take that opportunity. Lovely. Stand up and work at desk. You know, yeah, yeah. Like that. Take the stairs, even if it's two flights of stairs, one right. flight of stairs. Go yeah. to the MRT, just climb that one hmm. flight of stairs. So any of that exercise cumulatively helps. Yeah. So you don't have to think that I have to spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day doing it. Hmm. Break it up. And that's easier to conquer. Okay. Now I'm not going to ask you guys about the challenges because over the, I mean, people who will hear this or even when I was listening to you all, I kind of figured what, you know, the challenges would have been. I mean, of course, if you missed out on something, you can always fill it in. But I want to know what are the best moments or the best part of this entire regime or this entire diet or this entire exercise or this uh, life that you all were following? Uh, There have been several, but Hmm. by far, top three. First week. When you step on the scale, you look down and Whoa. you see that going the other way. <laughs> and that is probably the best thing. The best motivator is that you're putting in all this exercise, all this work, and you're hmm. seeing real results. In the first month, I think I saw six kgs. Yeah. First oh, month. Wow, really? Yeah. By just following this to the T. Correct. Yeah. And that's why I was like, wow, I, be- I think I've barely done anything and this is six kgs down. That was right. excellent. But so, Viral had very, in his first meeting with Ojola, he had said that, you know, I need to see immediate results, otherwise I'm not going to be motivated. <laughs> so immediate results, <laughs> any, you know, he got such immediate results and I was like, what's happened to me? I haven't lost 6 kgs. <laughs> yeah. But so as they say, th- yeah. That's, that's the, yeah. yeah. So he had lost difference. 6 kgs and how many had you lost um, in the first I month? I think I had, if I'm not wrong, I had lost about half of that. Wow. Yeah, three to four. Wow. But um, that, it, it was very drastic for yeah, him. For me, it was very mm. drastic. Yeah. In fact, That's he just... had to uh, cut back on certain things and add okay. a bit more like oh, carbs really? and stuff to yeah. his diet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but how tough is it to now keep going? Because I know once you start a diet or a lifestyle or a routine, because this is a part of a li- of your lifestyle now, mm. and you know, either way, if you if you give it up or you know if you lessen the intensity of the mm. diet uh, from what is the normal myth i don't know if it's a myth or it's a fact that you know then you're going to be putting up even putting on even more or you're going to mm. be like you know it's, it's going to go for a toss so what well, it's not it's a like? myth at all actually so one misconception mm. people have is that if i do this mm. the changes are permanent no we are here on a lifestyle change journey this is not a one-time thing right so the reason i've stopped eating six rotis for dinner is because it's fundamentally bad so if I go back to doing that after seeing all this results, I'll pile on that weight. Right. Without a doubt. Yeah. So the whole idea is to inculcate this as a lifestyle change. That like you're not going to go back to the old ways where you could drink all night and you can eat whatever you want and not care about what you put in your body and not see any of those results. It's not. So. What do you do on holidays? That's my most challenging so, bit. <laughs> you know, uh, I was actually going to come to that. Um, I think one of my highlights, and I had many highlights during this journey, was that uh, within the first month, in fact within the first two weeks yeah. of starting the program, we had to go for a, a wedding in Thailand. Wow. Now if you go to Thailand <laughs> and you go to, for an Indian wedding, I know. I mean the, the spread is just amazing, right? right? Starting from the time you wake up in the morning when you have breakfast to the after parties and stuff. But the fact that we were able to manage it so well when we were there, um, that was a big highlight. So, you know, January we had, January, February we had Thailand. In March, both of us decided to take a break and go to Bali again. Bali is like wow. a food heaven, especially for vegetarians as well. Yeah. So oh we did God. that. Um, I think in between, we traveled somewhere else. We I went forget. Cambodia. We went to Cambodia. Uh, we've been back to like Bangkok and stuff. Viral travels at least once a month for work. So you all have um, you have, have traveled as much as, as how long this diet is going on. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> In fact, I think on an average, it's been a one or two trips per month. Oh and my god! And despite that, we have been able to maintain um, our food uh, kind how? of habits. Just, just sheer knowledge. It's just knowing the difference between what to eat and what not to eat, and even if you don't have a, a variety of choices, what can you pick from that? I think just wow. that knowledge has been so empowering. So you're stuck to that breakfast and lunch and mid yeah, afternoon we snack. Yeah, we were able to uh, play around with the options. But you didn't have desserts. Like if you just felt like having a dessert after lunch, no. Uh, I think we have. There, there were times when we had. Okay. For example, we would go out for dinner or lunch hmm. and dessert would be a done deal, right? Like right. You finish with your mains and you'll have desserts. So we said no to that. Hmm. 
Okay, and the initial yeah. phase we said no to almost every dessert, sugary <laughs> item, sugary yeah. drink, whatever. But it's not that we were hundred percent, you know, off it. Yeah. So sometimes we did slip in a little chocolate or a brownie here and there. I'm sure, man. Yeah. Otherwise, it's yeah. it's hard to and live. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Do not deprive yourself because once you deprive yourself, you will go back and not come back again. So it's like you completely let go, you know, probably on a binge. So the idea is to maintain. the diet while not completely giving in to your cravings yeah okay, but you do have to satisfy those odd cravings sometimes if you really feel like an ice cream go ahead have it and the thing um that both of us did i think which i think worked for us was that if we were giving in to some of those cravings we would only do it when it was just either us alone right or us together um the reason for that is that as soon as well at least for me i'm not sure what real reason is but for me i felt that if i was to give in to something in front of others whom i've been telling that you know i'm i'm working on this mm. and stuff i feel it becomes very easy because as a society it's very easy for us to say oh just have another bite or you know nothing will yeah. happen just have a you know have another portion of this um but if you stay determined and if you 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 come across as someone who's sticking to you know your goals and your objectives um it's easier for them to respect you as well and if you're making an exception in front of the others um in a way like i feel that doesn't work in your favor because then they're just going to be like oh well you know she makes an exception anyway fantastic um, so that yeah we we stuck to that i think now we have been a bit more liberal with that as well but, i think um, what's very yeah. interesting is also from uh, the conversation that i'm having that of course you all were uh, self motivated and very yeah. determined but it's also that you all had this immense immense amount of trust on the dietitian that you guys were following yes, i mean you know you all had totally yeah. surrendered yourself that okay yeah. tell us the right thing to do and we'll follow yeah. it to the t which is yeah. also very important because i mean like you said i mean i i would go to a dietitian and if she if she would probably tell me things that don't really fit into my yeah. likes or dislikes i'll be like yeah, okay you know what i i don't want to follow this i'll just yeah. follow this part yeah. and i won't follow that part and yeah. that she happens a lot anything. <laughs> does she know like, yeah. does she think she is yes absolutely no you 100% right see we are victims of our own knowledge we think that we know it all and that's the hmm. basic problem you do not I mean, think of it practically logically any which way you cannot know about a topic with somebody has spent years studying right and you have researched 15 minutes on google so that is our inner mechanism saying that i really don't want to be doing this i'm finding an excuse mm. yeah do not do it so if you're putting your trust in someone okay do your research i'm not saying don't mm. do your research so make sure that the message is resonating the other person understands you but listen you wouldn't go to your gp and say the gp is saying hey you got a flu but i said no it's just a headache you know i i'm fine i don't need anything right. why did you go to the gp you're there you're paying for professional advice take that advice hmm. and follow it through so that is one very important message that you do have to be willing to take so that on board right this is no different than another health practitioner yeah it's no different than your gp they're giving you a bunch of medications things to do because they understand your body a bit better hmm So don't go burdened with your own knowledge of things. Have that conversation, but don't say I know better than you. You right. always fail in that equation. And I think also don't uh, hide. So yeah. even when, because <laughs> so one of the things we had to do um, was to send pictures of everything we were eating and drinking. to um, the dietitian to the dietitian wow everything and just because you know how? sometimes what happens and i myself have experienced this you meet uh, a nutritionist a dietitian and they say okay fill out this log and tell us how much you've had we tend not to fill out that log like yeah. until 5 minutes before our appointment so obviously you you forgotten you know specific details about portion size about time of the day etc things like right that. when you're taking a picture you've recorded the time of the day you've recorded the portion size and you just send it and it's as easy as that right. but um you know what a lot of people tend not to do is not send tend to do is not send pictures of like cheap things that they have yeah. <laughs> so whether it's you know dessert or whether it's mm. a, a coffee or whatever it may be um and i think for us both of us were very transparent that way so whatever we ate and whatever we drank we would just take a picture and send it through And, uh, so every time you're sitting down for your meal, you take a picture and send picture. it to her. Yes, that's right. I'm wow. sure she has a picture on her phone right now. Yeah, but wow. loads of pictures. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then then you're just transparent with the dietitian. You say, look, I just had this, 
and you can and then she'll ask you know why did you have this so was it a craving was it because you were in a client meeting and you just had to order something there was nothing else on the menu or you know whatever whatever right. the reason may be but at least then she is also informed um especially in times of cravings uh which i used to get from time to time um she knows that okay maybe there's some deficiency somewhere or there's some sort of a vitamin we need to add or you know whatever it may be so if she's not informed if we don't share that information with her how is she then meant to you know kind of tweak the program to ensure that it's working for us i'm so motivated to start going to this dietitian please do <laughs> please do we can i recommend her enough and we yeah. a lot of our friends and uh, Yeah, a lot so of close family relatives, members yeah. Yeah. Uh, have consulted with her and they are seeing the results. So there is no doubt about this. And that's the best part, see, because the reason we are here with you trying, you know, trying to create awareness, create awareness and, and you know, share our personal journey right. because we have seen this result and hmm. I absolutely would love to give as much knowledge to some, you know, right. three, years, three years ago where yeah. he thought he knew everything. and he tried and he failed and that could be very deep motivating and then he met Nancy yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah i think the other part of the equation is the exercise part hmm. which is um i would say equally important um so one of the things was uh you know after we we started seeing some weight loss obviously your body starts you know like i guess that yeah. in a way yeah. um so the the recommendation from ajola was okay you need to do strength training Okay. Now, strength training typically, you know, people would go and work with a personal trainer. We all know how expensive personal right. trainers can be. Um so we were just having a chat with one of our friends who's a who's a personal trainer. She was based in Bali at that time. Um and uh you know, we were like, "Hey, okay, we we've, we've got this. We need to do this. Hmm. Uh what would you recommend?" And then she was like, "Oh, I happen to be in Singapore for the next two weeks. I'm happy wow. to take you through some exercises." Mm. So she just took us through some exercises. She made some recommendations on, you know, what kind of equipment we can buy, which is easy to just take down to the gym and use. Um, and then she's like, "Okay, these are two programs I'm giving you. Just follow it. Now it's up to you whether you follow it or not. It's it's your discipline." Um, and that really helped. Just having that, you know, that wow. that person to come in and help. um and provide guidance from time to time and yeah just building on that and having a personal trainer is no different than in this case going to a dietitian, a dietitian. Yeah. yeah and showing the dietitian your blood works and saying that these are the facts on the ground mm. so we similarly we shared with evi what those goals are and what we have been prescribed right. uh, from a diet perspective but also why we failed in the past so mm. this is our third personal trainer oh lovely for 3 years yeah the reason the first one didn't work out is because personal trainers like a lot of other dietitians have fixed set this mm. is what i want you to do mm. not necessarily this is what you need not necessarily this is the best way how to get you compliant this is it one hour i'll kill you in that hour right that's how i'm giving you value for money which completely demotivates me so at that time when i first started with the personal training a couple of years ago i was 93 kgs and asking somebody 93 kgs to do squats or you burpees know and burpees stuff. and things yeah. like that is just immense painful, weight on your knees yeah. it's painful like i would give up half the way and not even look back yeah like the person trainer would be shouting behind me like, come back here and we need to finish this i, I like, love this i'm just person, walking away the person trainer and i would be like is he really coming back i'm like no, no. Just continue doing what we're doing let's just finish our session so that was extremely and i knew i told this person trainer that i can't do that you give me weights i can yeah. lift weights and i can yeah. probably get better results but no this is i'm the person trainer you let me decide what to do okay so we did that have you over here every was one willing to listen okay hmm. you can't do an hour as like I will not do an hour. Yeah. No, in fact, she herself was like, guys, I'm not going to give you a plan for an hour. Yeah. Oh wow. It's just twenty minutes. Take out twenty minutes of your day. Just do this, and if and, and then she said, look, I myself know that if I give you anything more than twenty minutes, you're not going to be motivated to come down and do it. Yeah. Because wow. within half an hour, technically, you could change, put on your shoes, bring your mm. equipment down, do the workout, go back up, shower, and be done in tw- thirty exactly. max forty minutes. Yeah. And so, yeah. That I think is very important. That exercise is key. But also find the right person to exercise you. You do need to know your body in the sense that if you can't do, for example, somebody will recommend go jog for two hours. I hate jogging. Hmm. I would rather do anything else. Right. Do, you know, to run. 
So you need to understand that, have that working relationship with whoever your trainer is. Even if you're doing it by yourself, do the exercise you will continue doing. So don't force yourself just because somebody is saying you'll get better results by doing A, B, and C. Don't force yourself towards it. You're nice. better off doing something that you like. For example, if you would like playing tennis, play more tennis mm-hmm. in that sense because you'll be more likely to push yourself in that mm-hmm. rather than I don't like playing tennis, but my dietitian or my physician or my you know personal well, trainer has yeah. asked me to play tennis. Hence, I'm here, not motivated. Great. So that's really important to find find that right balance of kind of exercise you like to do, kind of sports you want to play, and then find that sweet spot and you know just manage in between. Fantastic. In fact, uh, before we wrap this up, I think I want to touch another interesting aspect, and I would love to know from both of you because. Uh, while talk, you know this is a very real what you all are mm-hmm. saying is very real it's not like some you know i mean of course it's inspiring but it's not like you know two individuals who are already inspired and then they get down to you know accomplish a task as tough as this these are two individuals who probably are not that inspired who hate working out yeah, who probably absolutely. hate dieting yeah, but they have managed absolutely. to do this yeah. so of course the physical changes and the physical aspect is one the other is the emotional aspect because yeah. when you when you do something like this i mean i know if i have to skip dinner for a day because i do have early dinners but i have to skip dinner for a day it completely takes a toll on my mood i'm sure yeah. a lot of other people face yeah. other emotional issues with you know with so much bodily changes happening yeah. how do you guys have any of that how do you do you're hitting each other more <laughs> screaming at each other throwing pillows more or what no, no. so <laughs> like quite the opposite so, <laughs> you're stopped <laughs> yeah. no but i think mansi and sasuma for the longest of time uh they've been pulling my leg saying that okay at dinner table the days when i'm really <laughs> hungry they'd like okay you're a completely different person so they would be <laughs> having their own small little man. yeah small little jokes by and while i'm being all grumpy faced and thinking yeah nothing's wrong with me like, <laughs> what are you talking about things like that but no definitely the food mm. does play a, a big part, part yeah in, in that but it's not in the sense that i guess in the popular culture we've been led to believe for example that if you're down the only thing that can perk you up is a tub of ice cream or chocolate or yeah. things like that that's it ridiculous nothing, nothing <laughs> like that it was it's just yeah <laughs> so are you guys allowed to have like a plate of chola bhatura pav bhaji if you all feel like oh, tomorrow yes, for lunch we have, oh. have we've had plenty of pavs pizzas for lunch or for dinner Either. I know. Wow. Well, I mean, Mr. Pizza Hut, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Be, um, but yeah, I mean, we've, there's really not been a restriction yeah. on uh, these items, and also going back to potato being cut out of the diet. Potato is a very easy vegetable to work with, right? So every day you can have a aloo something ki sabzi. Yes. Um, but the fact is that that then adds on the calories and and the carbs and stuff, which is why it's easier to say let's just cut it out. And by the way, we didn't have any restrictions on how many vegetables we can eat. Yeah. So we can control the carb portions, but we can eat well technically indefinite amount indefinite of vegetables. Indefinite yeah. vegetables, right? So like when you're full. Yeah. So whenever in the out, and if you're still hungry, then we would just opt going for a veggie option or a more yeah. protein option. And the whole thing over here is it's not it's not a rigid structure that we can order. It it by design it was very flexible. Hmm. So the days when we felt like eating something, we could absolutely go on any. but because we saw that lifestyle change we incorporated that like we know now that if i've eaten a bit heavy lunch something that i should not probably have eaten i know how to manage it during dinner or the next day so if i know that i'm going to have a really heavy dinner i'm going out somewhere i probably eat a right, nice big salad it. for lunch hmm. so when we say lifestyle it literally means that so we our thought process has changed and whenever we try to have cheat days by the way we <laughs> end up regretting it mainly because like that chocolate did not taste As, as good, good. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was not very satisfying. Yeah, yes. yeah. I remember when you know the first time I uh, I went back to like okay I'm going to have pizza. I walked out and I was like hmm, that pizza me you know it didn't taste as good. But <laughs> just the fact that I had that pizza or whatever vada pav whenever we had it just okay fine you've had it. But then we realized that our, our body as itself has started, started rejecting telling, it. Yeah, yeah. And it started rejecting. Like it tells us when it's yeah enough. yeah. Quickly back on the emotional part. uh and going back to your very first comment about how you felt like i was someone who never really had an issue with the way i looked and stuff right i actually also thought i was like that but um i didn't realize at which point it actually did start affecting me affecting me hmm. and i think it was only after going through this process or while going through this process rather i should say that i realized that 
unconsciously you know somewhere in our subconscious mind or something we tend to take on things and actually not even realize that we are reacting to things in a way because of like something hmm. that we are feeling inside right um and uh, going through this process i it just felt very liberating um and though it may not sound i mean it's very stereotypical and sound so very cliche that you know if you if you are you know if you've lost weight and stuff you know it's a stereotypical or looking good type of person but i think just the feeling in fact just a feeling of of being lighter or just knowing that you know um i can walk into a store and like fit into things that i want to wear hmm. because there was a point where i was walking into stores and not being able to fit into outfits right which were probably very depressing in the yeah. changing room yeah um but yeah all of that kind of added on and um something completely unrelated and we were talking about just you know i, I had told viral that i'm very interested in doing stage now i've danced on stage mm. i've done emceeing and stuff like that but i've never acted right and uh, coming from a family where everyone else has acted my father had acted and stuff i was like no i should give this a go right and um, you know we we found out about the uh the auditions for dasta hmm. the hindi theater festival right and i didn't even know prabir registered me for the audition wow oh you and, did <laughs> and he just came home one day in fact he didn't even tell me i got a text message saying oh your husband has registered you for this these are the details of the wow. audition <laughs> and i was like what do i go in with but just that the fact that i was able to go in hmm. do the audition hmm. go for the second round of the audition get selected do whatever i am doing right now I think is some sort of a byproduct or result of whatever we have done in the first 6 months of the year and just that confidence that comes with it that actually more than anything it's just knowing that once you put your mind to something you can Exactly. I have a slightly different perspective hmm. to it. So first of all our society by and far is weighted against you know fat people. Hmm. Uh, let's just say the people who are challenged with their weight for health issues for whatever reasons people do not look kindly on them. I've been skinny, I've been fat, I've been skinny, I've been fat. So I've been having very oscillating relationship with weight throughout my life, and I've seen those aspects. So mm. people praise you when you lose weight, yeah, <laughs> and then people take liberties with you as a motto and guru huh. and all uh-huh. of those things. Yeah, uh-huh. simple, the whatever. Yeah, but that still is there. Subconsciously, things start piling up. You know, right. Just like putting bad food in your in, in your system, it True. piles up eventually. So one of the emotional things I think is definitely that you start feeling good with yourself, and we did not go in with the aim of losing weight. Hmm. We went in with the aim of being healthy. Weight loss was a vehicle right. to get there. Hmm. Weight loss was absolutely required to get there. But even now, we are not checking our weight to see whether we've lost weight for the heck of it. Hmm. We're saying, "Are we eating healthy lives?" And we are. We are medication free. I was yeah. on uh, uh, metformin. Yeah. So. I was building up my mm. insulin resistance. Mm. Doctor had put me on metformin. In fact, he had doubled the dose of metformin, and I said, "Wow, oh, I want to get off this." Mm. And I am. So at the beginning of the year, I was taking medication to control my glucose levels. Now I'm completely off that medication. Yeah. Fantastic. And I was. I used to fall in <coughs> like every few weeks. You know, just come down the normal cold, which is so prevalent yeah. in Singapore. Um, now that's what it's come to an extent where I. If I do get a cold or something, I actually have forgotten how to react to it, and I have to go back to my medicine kind of pouch and look into okay, which which medicine should I be using. Wow! So we travel without meds these days. Like at best, we'll have like a Panadol, mm-hmm. you know. But um, and that's a huge improvement. It has to be almost effortless, you know, uh, amalgamated into your life very, you know, seamlessly. Very seamlessly. recruit more people yeah yeah exactly right? recruit yeah. friends you know tell your friends hey i'm doing this so the friends will say okay you know i'm inviting you tonight for my party but i'll make something separate for you yeah. people have offered that we've said no no we'll have a dinner we'll come no i'll prepare something you tell me what you need yeah, yeah. it's been and very the number of people who have done that is immense and people not forcing you to have alcohol and mm. i love my wine i used to love my drinks and what not and when i said that hey i'm not going to drink tonight people initially thought like what nonsense like mm. how can you enjoy mm. but no once i said that no i'm not doing it they were very supportive and saying that no you're not going to have that so the more people you build into your you know your support network 
the easier it gets and that's what it's all about make it yeah. easy on yourself don't just rely on your will power because will power will give way somewhere i think it's very interesting you know the both of you have come, uh, come into this with you know probably i mean the same aim or the same goal but with different, different motives and yeah. different experiences yeah. and different kind of mindsets and yeah. still you all are towards a similar goal and reaching where you all want to reach yeah. mainly uh, like like you said a lifestyle change and yeah. not really a diet change or a weight change or you know more than, mm. more than anything it's a lifestyle change because yeah. mm. eventually i think physically emotionally it is going to affect our yes. everyday life for the better but both of you look lovely that is something i have to say i mean, i <laughs> met, i i met have some way to go yeah. no that's what i was because i met you i think a couple of weeks or months back at some event and i was like what's done i i yeah. actually noticed a difference that and i didn't know about this diet or anything at all but i noticed that you all were looking drastically different drastically happier also not that you all mm. didn't look happier before but there was yeah. there was a certain glow that you know it comes from a certain i wouldn't say lifestyle change yeah. because i didn't know by them but then i thought yeah maybe you know because obviously when you suddenly uh, lose so much weight you put on a lot of confidence so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. did reflect a lot more than the interview i want to know personally as well that how did you all do this so now 28 kg is already how many more to go no but uh, till the time we are satisfied i suppose completely yeah, i would i would, I would like to say that i would want to lose more inches rather than weight right all right all the best i hope the next time we talk you all are skinnier than now <laughs> no matter get skinnier yeah stronger yeah, stronger, yes. stronger yes. is the way to be Absolutely. and uh, thank you so much for sharing your story with us i'm i'm hoping a lot of our listeners will be inspired to go the same way that you all did i definitely am and i'm i'm not saying this because i'm interviewing you all but i always i mean a lot of problems i think viral and i kind of share the same problems <laughs> when it comes to weight loss so yeah. you know i mean yeah i think i should go that way and i'm sure a lot of your viewers will be We are regular yes, people. Yes, yeah. This is nothing yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.